Okay, my wonderful, wonderful friends. Look, I know that school is an issue now. And I know that a lot of the things that were being taught in school are another issue that need to be reconsidered. Okay, that's all. Reconsider them. See what they say and then make a determination. Now, I've been saying this over and over and over. Go to Coursera. I'm going to show you what they just sent me. Every day, they basically, now they send me something, try this or look at this, because I do all those courses. And, and they're fabulous and they're free. Now, why I am showing you this is for you to understand. I've been saying over and over and over, get it, books. Get these books like this and, and, and separate them out into different areas of study, unless you just study one area, whatever you do. But make sure you document them, like put little tabs on them. This is about this, this is about this, this is about this. Now, you all know that I've been working on light and the separation of the dark and the white light. Now, and I can't understand it. So the only way you can fully understand something is to draw it out. For me, that's the way I work. Now, maybe you're different. So everybody's different, so I'm not saying you have to do my way. But here's the way I do it. I draw things out and then I reason them out and I think that this is spinning this way and then as it comes up it actually comes back around and then I can see particles moving away from each other sort of in my mind but I do have an issue with this I really can't see how they can absolutely actually get the dark completely away from the, the white but it's got something to do with that razor blade effect something like that I don't know what it is, but that's what I've been working on is that razor blade effect. I just showed something where they, it's called a Shilrin, I believe that's the name of it, effect. I'll show it in a second. But it's got to do with the way light has a dark and a white side to it, which is, and I think it might be the dark matter. And somehow they're cutting off the dark side of it, just getting it out of the way and only allowing the white side to come through, which highlights any energy. Because right? the dark side is dark forever. It's never going to light up. It's just dark. It has to be with the white, but you will never white it up. You will never light it up. It will never reflect. It will never absorb energy. It just doesn't do anything. I, don't, I can't explain it, but it happens to be a carrier like a chair that the, the white one rides in, and when the white one gets there, bam, it goes, and the chair just falls away. I don't know what to say about it. But they've always said there's a weak and there's a strong, there's dark matter and there's dark energy, and, and I have to agree with that. Now, how it gets away from each other, I don't know. But what my point being here is write a manual, and I go back 50 years, I go back to my manual, I got one over here, this is 50 years ago. And I go back to this fairly regularly to see, you know, because I did all the calculations and how things worked and how the actual temperature changes create electricity. All right, so this goes way, way back. And you, you, what you need to do is document these things, one right after the other. Make sure you have your notes. Once you have your notes, you can refer back to it and say, what was I thinking here? But make sure you could make, like here I say, the same force travels right hand around the torus in and back out from the inductance at the venturi. Inductance is um, you induce a current, you force a current. It's something I could explain if I had enough time. <laughs> but let's just, I want to make you into a scientist. I want you to start to understand. Right, this book here, I started this one back in 2017. And get yourself a book. Make yourself notes, but do it, do it right. And then when you present yourself to a, an employer or something, you have a valid reason to say, here's why you should employ me. I understand. I have my book. I can explain. Not just somebody giving me an A or a B or a D or an F because you didn't agree. You know, anyway, these are the kind of things I say. And look at this Origins, Foundation of the Universe, Astrotech, Spacecraft, Dynamics, 
statistical. Uh, I mean, look at all these things. This is like a bowl of candy to me. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. For free. Every, they're all free. And they, they, these are like Wesleyan University. This one here, I've taken this one actually. Well, actually, this is two photons and more. I'm taking the one photon. Hmm. Because they do. They come one, they come two, they come, and then they start to make matter. See, they, I don't know who's paying attention to what, and I don't really know what they are teaching anymore. I really don't. But this introduction to physical chemistry, I, I, I kind of think that they still are teaching, like, you know, the special relativity. This is not correct. I can accelerate light. Very simple to do. I've shown it over and over for years now. And I know they understand, well, they understand that the Bohr model is wrong. So Einstein based everything he said on the Bohr model. It's wrong. All right, we have to go back to Bohr. He was wrong. In atomic physics, the Bohr model, or Rutherford Bohr model, presented by Niels Bohr and Ernest Rutherford, 1913. This is when Einstein started to base his, his conclusions on this system consisting of a small, dense nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons. It's just not correct. Similar to the structure of the solar system, but with attraction provided by electrostatic forces in place of gravity. Totally wrong. They are completely electron flooded. And here is the electron flood theory where it's all electrons make the nucleus. So it's not just one big proton and then one electron for hydrogen. And then helium has two protons, two neutrons, and a couple of electrons. Absolutely not. It's thousands. That's helium. 7,350 electrons in the core. 7,350 instead of four particles. And even hydrogen itself now instead of protons in the center a proton in the center you would have 1837 electrons in there so electron flood theory replaces Bohr theory and why do I say that's valid to say that because it is okay this is the Royal Institution and they are the top physicists in the world supposedly 860,000 subscribers all doing very deep stuff now listen to this they're talking about lepton universality and leptons are the particles that I'm talking about they got all kinds of names for them now look up muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos electron neutrinos c create the showers muons are the dark particles I've shown it a billion times. Now, let's just cut to the chase. Are they saying, could the standard model be wrong? And then they explain, here's what it's supposed to look like. Here's all the particles they're supposed to be. And we can't account for the variation between the particles. So here's what happens. They come in like this. And when they break apart, they know they break apart. They know they come in like this. But when they come out the other side, there's not always the same number that came in this side. So there should be all this number of pluses, this number of minuses, let's say. Think of it that way. When they come out the other side, they're not. There's more minuses than there is pluses or vice versa. So they, they're saying, this does not fit our model. How could this be? And I have determined that we can separate the black from the white, which is exactly what they're talking about. Instead of all the blacks coming back as the same number as the whites, they're seeing a, a, a difference. And I can agree with that now because uh, of what I've seen. So anyway, let's just cut to the chase way down the end here. I think it's three right around here. Violated. Well... What that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. There is no way, and there never will. Because, first of all, there's no way they can explain isotopes. All of the different 
unstable and stable isotopes which surround every single one of these. There's hundreds of different, well, not necessarily hundreds that they know of, but there literally is hundreds and literally thousands of particles that surround each one of these particles. So copper is not just copper and it's always exactly the same number of particles. No, you got copper is stable, 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 and unstable, stable, 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 and unstable. Both sides of its extra electrons and not enough electrons. It's a quantity. It's a, just a gigantic, gigantic, gigantic quantity. Because once you get, this is only four particles. Two, two electrons, I mean two neutrons and two protons. And this is the second lightest particle they, they know of, helium. You get way up in here, <laughs> you're up into the weights that are, are hundreds of thousands of particles. You, it's a completely different world in the nuclear realm. And then, depending upon the number of particles in that nuclear realm, chunk. It influences a certain number surrounding it. And it influences them elegantly. These, these lock in a pretty good, it's called the rule of eight. If you look it up, well, let's just look at some, uh, I get too deep in this and people don't want to see all of the little details, but for me, if you don't see the details, you don't see anything. Anyway, let's just see what she's... Let's just go back to... I like hearing her say this. <laughs> Something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. In fact, the only way we think we can explain what's going on is if there are new particles in the universe associated with new physics processes beyond those that we understand, and that these new particles are interfering with the B mesons as they decay and suppressing the decay to muons compared to electrons. This is what they're talking about, muons and electrons. I'll show you that in a second. Now, if that turns out to be the case, that will truly be momentous. Forget the Higgs. This will be the first sign of physics beyond the standard model. It's completely obvious already, and they've known this for five years. And I think the only reason they're really confessing up to it, this was only about six months ago, it, it is because Rod and I have been showing this for years, that you can separate the particles. And you remember what she just said, muon and electron. Well, here, let's go back one more second, just be sure we don't miss something to electrons. Whoops, now, if that turns out... To I did, or right. let me go back here. Because she's talking about muons compared to electrons. Listen. Interfering with the B mesons as they decay and suppressing the decay to muons compared to electrons. Muons compared to electrons. Let's just go look at that. What she's referring to is exactly what I will show you. Muons, which are these, they don't do anything. They're just a black ball. Electron neutrino, muon neutrino, electron neutrino gives you showers of, you know, cascades of swirling particles. And they see them, produces multiple cones, and um, I'm going to show you those. That's what she's saying. They should, in other words, when they came in, there was a, one of these was attached to one of these as balls, little white and black balls. When they concuss, Instead, then they separate. When they come back together, they're saying they're not the same number that comes back together. I don't know if they can prove that or not, but I can see them separate, and I don't think they've ever been able to see that before. Now I'll run through a quick pulse red laser. It looks like a wave, but really there's a particle in there. When we shoot it through a Venturi, which is nothing more than an accelerator, it forces acceleration. It's, it's fully understood, and I could explain it, but it's, I'd have to get into a lot of technical details. But trust me, it's exactly like the hose on a nozzle, a nozzle on a hose. It, it restricts and it forces the... Anyway, just, just, it's, it accelerates it. Let's just go with that. <laughs> so that would have never accelerated, except for the venture. So now the particle is literally being pulled, you can see, out of its wave, and the particle itself is now being shown, and as it stacks up on itself, it's concussing, and the concussion causes 
the separation of the muons and the electrons. That's the electron neutrino. That's the muon neutrino. They come through together, and they will always ride together until they collide with something or become extremely concussed, as we will see in the Venturi. And when they concuss in the Venturi, the white part comes through the Venturi and causes this. The black part just goes out all by itself. No, forget that's the acceleration. These are the black balls. These are the muon neutrinos. These are the electron showers, the electron neutrinos. Now, they say when they come back together over here, because they recombine after they come out the other side. You see the black balls come back into the white ones and then they sort of just recombine and they turn back into the particles that they were before this kind of particle. Now, again, don't forget, that's a photon. That will hit you and warm you up and it will light you up and it will do nice things to you, but it will not kill you. This will kill you. This is half of one of these. This is an electron. Two electrons or maybe four electrons in a box, I'm not sure. It's an accumulation of electrons. They look like this, two of them side by side. But this will kill you. It will come through the air as lightning or electricity or static. It's disruptive. It's, it's a discharge of strictly these particles. These create showers of energy. These create destructive particles. These, create, these are ionizing particles. These are, are, are particles that invade extremely aggressively. And that's why sparks and burning and combustion and, and electrocution, <laughs> you know, that's what happens. Now that, the light, you can, you can shine light on you and you could get some pretty serious burns when you get way, way, way up into the very extreme spinning frequencies that really tear things up, yes. But not like this will. That baby there will kill you in an instant. This, it'll burn you up, but it, it won't, it won't be the same. This will interact with the molecules in you. This will burn the molecules in you. It's time to look at things differently. Get, make sure you get yourself a book. Write yourself out information. Get yourself a whiteboard. Think things through. That's the problem is, is everybody's been told to listen to your professors. All your professors know all this stuff. No, they do not know this stuff. They are telling you something that somebody told them to say. And they are afraid to say anything different because they'll be ridiculed and destroyed. And absolutely will happen. So I am literally one of the only people that can speak out. I know a lot of people must know about this. This is nothing special. But it's, who can, who can talk? You can't talk and keep your job. Can't talk. Keep your friends. Actually, that's that's true. It's just they they just don't like to hear anybody say you know always want to be arguing, and then you turn into an angry person, and then people hate you. <laughs> so I've got I'm, I'm away from that angry stuff. But I want so I want to turn on some kids. Well, anybody. I want to turn on people. This is not designed for kids. It has nothing to do with kids. This is just learning. I didn't start learning until I was 60 years old. Or, well, I, I started early, but I, I couldn't get anywhere. I still could, can't get anywhere. But it's, you know, once you have the evidence and you can document it and you can show it like I am, then you go from there and sooner or later, it's, this can't be hidden forever. Although they just crushed Velikovsky 70 years ago. And I talk to people now, they have no clue about it. They, they laugh. They say, oh, he was a pseudoscientist. No, he wasn't. He was a way ahead of everybody. He is my hero. I wrote a book about him. I love the guy. And he is destroyed. And I will make sure that that changes. I love you. God bless you.